Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and this is my review of the Netgear ReadyNAS Duo model number RND2000. Now before I kick off this review I should mention that I'm recording this with the Olympus Pen EPL1. Now on with the review, the ReadyNAS Duo is actually available in various configurations, either with no hard drives installed or with a single 500GB, 750GB or a one terabyte hard drive pre-installed. Here I'm reviewing the RND2000, which is the empty box to which I've added my own hard drives. Now, what you get in the box, we well, get the unit itself, you get a power supply, you get an ethernet cable for connecting it to your uh, network. You also get this quick start guide, which talks you through setting up the device for the first time. Very easy to follow. And then you also get a CD which contains some software which allows you to locate the ReadyNAS on your network for the first time and also a full user manual. Now back to the device itself, let's give you a quick tour around the device. Um, on the front we've got this power on off switch, we've got some activity lights, we've got a backup button, single USB port. This front flap opens, I'll show you what's in there in a short while. Around the side we've just got some vents for heat dissipation. Around the back we've got a fan. This kicks in every now and again, but it's not obtrusive. We've also got Kensington locks. You can tether it to a desk. We've got a reset switch. This is where the power cable goes down here. We've got an ethernet socket here, which supports up to gigabit speeds, and then two further USB sockets. Now, what the ReadyNAS Duo offers up is a central location to store all of your files. You simply pop in a hard drive, either one or two, and these go into these caddies here. You just pop this switch down, pull this up, and a caddy comes out. And then once this CAD is out, you can see that this is a standard three and a half inch serial ATA drive, and you pop it in the caddy, and then on the bottom you just uh, locate it with four screws just to, to secure it into that caddy. And then it's just a simple matter of sliding it back into the device, like so. And then once it's all the way in, you just push down on the tab and that's it back in the device. Now, as I say, you can either put just one or two hard drives in there. I'll tell you why that's important in a short while. So you then connect the ReadyNAS up to your network via the gigabit ethernet port. And once configured, all of your files that you've stored on here are then available to your computers and other devices either wired or wirelessly connected to your network. Now these extra devices could be things like desktop PCs, laptops, perhaps an iTunes streaming device, or perhaps even a games console like the Sony PS3 because you can actually stream content from this to your PS3. Now setting it up is really easy. I'm going to show you an on-screen demo now of some of the things you can configure using a standard internet browser. So once you've got your Netgear ReadyNAS Duo powered on and connected to your network, you need to locate it for the first time. You do this by running the radar application that Netgear supply, or you can indeed download this from their website. Once you're logged on, you're presented with this home screen, and all of the control is handled by a standard internet browser. This home screen gives you an overview of the host name, model number, serial and firmware version, the memory installed, the IP address and the current status. It's worth noting that once you have assigned an IP address to your device, to make a note of this so that you can easily access and configure it by typing it into your internet browser's window up here. So to control the device it's very easy, we click on these various tabs down the left hand side. Underneath network, we get some drop down options. The first one is for interfaces. And here you can actually assign that IP address, which is a very good idea because it knows that you've got a set IP address for accessing the device. The other options are for it to actually get the IP address from a DHCP server. We've also got access here to enable jumbo frames. Next one down is global settings, and here you set your workgroup name 
your host name, the default gateway and some DNS settings. Then we've got further settings here for WinS and DHCP. Under security you can set an admin password and also set up some user and group accounts. Under the services tab we can set some standard file protocols. You do this with easy to use tick boxes. Here you can see that I've got CIFS enabled. I've also got the option of NFS, AFP, FTP, HTTP and HTTPS access. The next one down is for streaming services and here I can enable Squeeze Center, iTunes Streaming Server and Ready DLNA. Of interest to Mac users particularly, the iTunes Streaming Server allows you to stream your iTunes library to other devices. Then we've got some discovery services and this is how the, the actual ReadyNAS Duo can be discovered by other devices on your network. Here I've got Bonjour service enabled and also Universal Plug and Play. And then we've got these add-ons I mentioned in my main review. The first option is for BitTorrent, then we've got ReadyNAS Photos and ReadyNAS Remote. Under the Volumes tab we've got some volume settings and we've also got some settings for USB storage and this enables you for example to uh, have the device automatically copy content when you plug it into that front USB port. Under the Shares tab you can add share volumes on your, on your hard drives. You can also set up various backup options including one here for Time Machine. Under the Printers tab we can control the printers that may be connected to those rear USB ports. Under the System tab we can control the clock, various alerts so it sends out warning emails when there's problems with the unit and also some performance settings here to get the best out of your ReadyNAS Duo. The Power tab is very interesting as well as this can save you some electricity along the way. I've got this set to actually power down the unit every night at 11pm and to start it up automatically at 7am in the morning. There's also support for UPS devices as well. The very last option here allows you to either shut down the device or to actually reboot it. And then under status we can get a health overview and then we can also access logs to see what the device has done over the past weeks. If you're not happy delving into all these settings manually you can switch to wizard mode which guides you through all the settings in a very easy to understand manner. Well, now let's go back to the main review. Well I hope that on-screen demo was useful. Now let's move on to how this device performs and my thoughts about the ReadyNAS Duo. Well during my test I've used this for two main things. Firstly was to archive all of my video reviews that I produced for Geekanoids. I wanted to keep them safe and have easy access to them on my various computers. Now for this it performed perfectly. The fast file transfers were fine. Uh, robust connection, it never let me down, never disappeared off my network or anything. And because I've got two hard drives installed in here. I'm just going to explain this. When I'm saving a video file across to the ReadyNAS Duo it saves all of my data perhaps into bay one. So all of my files are on this first hard drive. Because I've got a second one installed it actually mirrors the data across. So if one of my hard drives fails then I know I've got a safe second copy of it. So in this example if hard drive 1 failed I would take this out, replace it with a new hard drive and then my safe copy that the ReadyNAS Duo put onto this hard drive in Bay 2 would then be rebuilt across onto Bay 1 so I'd have two copies again. So I've got peace of mind that all my files are safe. The second use that I used the ReadyNAS Duo for in my tests were to stream content across to my PS3. I like watching films a lot so I stored a lot of video files on here and they streamed really smoothly across to my PS3 with no hitches at all. I should also mention that the ReadyNAS Duo has a lot more tricks up its sleeve. Remember these two USB 2 ports that I showed you around the back? Well you can connect things like a printer to one of them so you can print across your network 
or you could connect perhaps an external hard drive. So if I had a one terabyte external USB 2 hard drive, I could plug it in here and then access those files across my network as well. Now you can also activate add-ons on this. There's a BitTorrent client and that allows you to set a download going and then you can actually switch off your main PC and the ReadyNAS Duo will continue downloading it. You can also, on this front USB 2 port, you could plug in something like a digital camera, for example, push the backup button, it'll copy the content of the digital camera across to the hard drive inside, and then you can use the ReadyNAS Photos add-on, and you can share your photos with others, members of your family perhaps, and they can access the content that's on here very, very easily. So a lot of things you can do with it. There's a lot more besides just those two add-ons I've mentioned. But for starters, uh, just those two alone add a lot of functionality to the unit. Now shop around and you can buy a ReadyNAS Duo RND2000, the exact model I've reviewed here without any hard drives installed, for £155 in the UK or $240 in the US. You get a three year warranty for that price too. This is a very good product, it does exactly what it says on the box and it's got that flexibility to add even more features as and when you want to use them. As such, it comes highly recommended. Well thanks very much for listening, come back soon and check out more video reviews on the Geek Noise channel. This video review is sponsored by BMI Solutions, the largest reseller of document scanners within the UK, with a price promise guarantee.